Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the Balkan Math Olympiad 1989, problem number one. A cool number theory problem to try out. It might be non-standard for you for a minimum of 30 minutes, ideally 60, not more than two hours if you'd like to go along with us. Give this a go. Your first ideas for the next five minutes. What do you see? And for me, the thing is like, okay, so these are all of its divisors ordered and it needs to have at least four divisors, okay. And the sum of the squares of these divisors needs to equal n. We have a one here. Not all of these divisors can be the same. I'm thinking if the, if the smallest prime, like number that divides n, and such a thing exists, if that is p, then d2 is p. But say, I'm thinking, say like, we can have a couple of situations, either p, q, r, all divide n, where there are like different primes, and we have like this situation, like p, q is greater than r, or we could have, huh, but then do we know what about p squared is p squared divided? There seems to be a lot of possibilities like we could potentially brute force it but what good is that so let's say, okay so then let's look at maybe something else let's look at what i invite you to pause for two minutes think about what would you look at now and for me it's like okay i'm in complexity here let me try to do something that's a bit less has a bit less complexity for example if n is odd or even, because that gives me whether 2 is the smallest divisor, right? it gives me the smallest divisor potentially. If it's odd, then every single one of these is odd. But then there's some, there's four of them, there's some is even. So this means that 2 actually divides n. So we have 2 divides n. So in fact, d2 is equal to 2. And now what does this mean? I invite you, please pause for two to three minutes and ask yourself, what does this mean now? And the answer is, well, look at this. So two divides n. And we have a couple of possibilities. Either there's like, if n has another divisor p, the smallest one after two. And we either have that, the next sort of the divide, we have d3 is equal to p, and then d4 needs to be equal to two times p. Unless p is like three, then this could be potentially four. We can actually check that, like that case would be, we would have a four and a three divided, like we'd have two squared and times three divide n. And then I think we'd get a contradiction, we'd get one plus two squared plus three squared plus four squared. Now, what is this number? I think it won't be divisible by three. Actually, it will be divisible by three because there's three of these. Not divisible by three, what do we get? We get 16 plus nine plus five, if I'm not mistaken, which is 30. So is there a number divisible? Wow, so n equals 30 seems to work. Let's triple check that. And then 16, three, four, and one. We sum them up, we get 30. So, okay, now we're done with that case. Actually, is 30 divisible by, oh no, 30 is not divisible by four. So 30 doesn't work, my bad. So it seems like, okay, this sort of n doesn't work. So if three divides n, well, wait a second, if three divides n, we have a couple of possibilities. Like we have either one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus six squared. And this number is not going to be divisible by three because this isn't. So we must have one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus now five squared because two times three is the divisor of n if two and three are. And this is 25 plus nine plus five which is equal to 39. This is not divisible by five in like ever. So given the, these couple of cases, we know that P isn't equal, this number N is not going to be divisible by three. And with that, we know that we'll either have a situation where we have a P and then a two P, or we will have a four and then a prime number. 
So either 4 divides n, and then we get another prime, and that seems to be more doable, right? We can maybe constrain this, whatnot. And here I invite you, yes, you, to pause for the next 10 minutes and try to see what would you do here? Like, what is sort of the next step? We have it even, we know it's not divisible by free. Like, what are we doing now? Okay, pause now and let me clear up this board. So the first case for me would be to say, okay, let's say we have case where case one or divides n. Right. Or actually maybe the prime case would be quicker. Let's actually not do this case. Let's say four doesn't divide n, case one, four does not divide n, and then we have d freeze equals some prime p. And d four has to be equal to 2p, which means if there's another prime number that divides, n it's going to be greater than 2p. For any q that divides n, q is greater than 2p. Okay, with this in mind, what do we have? We have n is going to equal 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 5 plus p squared plus 4p squared, which is equal now to 5 times p squared plus 1. Okay, so what does this tell us? Well, n is divisible by 5. Huh, this is cool. I actually kind of, I dig this. This is pretty, pretty cool. For me, at least, this is pretty cool. And now what do we have with that? So 5 divides n, which means this prime number, we, we showed it cannot be free, so p is equal to 5, and then we have n is 5 times 25 plus 1, 5 times 26. And does this number work? This number is 130. So we would have 130. Double checking, it's 2 times 13 times 5. And this is equal to 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 5 squared plus 10 squared. Huh, nice. So this seems to be a solution, 130. Good case, good job. Now, what about the other case? I invite you, pause for five minutes, deal with the other case. Case two, four divides n. What do we have then? D4 needs to be equal to the, a prime number. Otherwise, we will have a, what's it called? An odd, plus an even, plus an even, plus an even. So we need to have a prime p, and that's going to be D4 is going to be p greater than or equal to 5, and we're going to have n is equal to 1 plus a 2 plus a 1 plus 2 squared plus 4 squared, which is equal to, so now we're going to have n is 21 plus p squared. What do we have from here? Pause for two minutes and figure it out. Well, the answer is p divides n, so p divides 21. P cannot be free, we've already ruled that out. So P needs to equal to seven, kaboom. And now we need to check that this actually works out, that this number is going to be then 21 plus 49 is uh, 70. But then this number isn't divisible by four. Could we just finish by modulo four then? Because P squared is, oh yeah, we could have finished by modulo four. P squared is one modulo four. 1 is 1 modulo 4, then we get n is 2 modulo 4, but on the other hand, it is divisible by 4, 0 modulo 4, a contradiction. So, this case fails. And with that, our only solution is n is equal to 130. This finishes up our nice little problem. And it goes to show, like, you know, you when you have problems like this which are new to you, you've never done something like this before, you need to see, like, okay, Prime, I mean, here you're looking at divisibility and you really need to build up from first principles. Okay, primes, what do I have with primes? Uh, I'm looking at primes in general. Ah, that's kind of like there's so many cases. Okay, let me take it down a notch. More simple, starts with simple ideas and build up to complex ideas. This is a pattern that comes up oh, again and again in problems. Start simply before you go to complexity. We, start, we try to start off with complexity like all the primes and then we saw, wait a second, if I just Parity, da, da, da. And we're basically from there on, we were on a high horse and we finished the problem. Now we're done. And as always, thanks for problem solving.